On other matters, though, I try and make, <laughs> spend my week, I should say, trying to make sense of the mad world in which we live. And in doing so, I really hope it saves you some time and some of your sanity, quite frankly, because once you peer behind the curtain, you can never see things the same way again. You see, we're all captured in a vortex of lies and half-truths that are sprinkled amongst a few facts. And these facts are only what the gatekeepers want you to know. The rest are suppressed, they're buried, denied or decried as fake news or conspiracy theories. And it's not just the tech giants that are doing this to us. The bureaucratic tyrants, they're loving the power trip that they're on as well. And then, of course, we've got the intolerant tossers in the public domain who complain to authorities about anything they don't like in an attempt to have it cancelled. I encounter these losers all of the time. There's plenty of them on social media. And they actually use their ignorance and their intolerance as some sort of virtue by boasting they've reported you or dobbed you into the authorities. They're actually today's version of the Stasi informants from East Germany. But make no mistake, these people are dangerous because, you see, they place more importance on the appearance of moral correctness than actually being correct. And that's why the person repeating lies is often seen as more virtuous in the modern world than the person who actually tells the truth. We see it everywhere. And I could start with COVID, the death statistics, the vaccine facts or the dangers, but I'm not going to. You see, that would trigger too many numbed brains. And quite frankly, I've got corona fatigue at the moment, like many of you, I imagine. You see, the coronavirus and this pandemic is serving as a monumental distraction while other crazy things are going on in the world. Things like the great greenwashing. What's that? Well, it's the term for the climate conners who, who pay lip service to the perils of carbon dioxide and their woke response to it, but it's really got nothing to do with reality. But as I said before, in this crazy world, saying the acceptable thing is actually what's most important. Take, for example, those nations who demand we do something about emissions. How many of them do you think meet the targets that they want others to abide by? For example, the Kyoto Protocol. Do you remember that one? 38 nations then had binding carbon dioxide commitments. And I tell you, you have to go through some statistical gymnastics to claim that any of them actually met them. For example, the USA and Canada, they both dropped out of it. And then, of course, we had the former Soviet states that skewed the data from the 1990 start date, as did the global financial crisis in 2008, and then there were these credits that were purchased from other nations. There was next to no accountability for these carbon credits. And in fact, if you look at the carbon trading market that was operating in Europe at the time, it was as crooked as any mafia racket could be. But things have changed. You see, now we're all in it together, this time under the Paris Accord. Uh, but not that much has changed because it's a bit of a case of all animals are equal but some animals are more equal than others. The most unequal animal is, of course, the Chinese panda. It's black and white, and that's clearly symbolic. White for the purity it carries, and black for the wonders of coal. As an aside, coal futures reached record highs in July because of a heat wave in China, and that sent electricity use soaring. And so a billion Chinese thank their lucky stars they weren't reliant on the wind to cool their homes last month. But coal continues to boom right across Asia. Five countries there, China, India, Indonesia, Japan and Vietnam, they're responsible for around 80% of Asian coal investment. And they have plans to develop over 600 coal-fired power units there. Now, according to the Greenies and their zombified acolytes, these nations must be barking mad. And I mean barking mad, you see, because... We're told all the time that coal is a super expensive electricity method of generating electricity and the cost to build a coal-fired power plant is actually quite horrendous. So surely a smart government, or one that was intent on helping their citizens, they would not build a coal-fired power plant, they'd instead build one of those perpetual energy machines that were, we know as wind and solar. After all, they're basically free, aren't they? Well. It made me think, why would these countries be pursuing this uneconomic policy, or so-called uneconomic policy, over the economic? 
What do they have in common? Well, it's actually a little thing called manufacturing. Now, it's no coincidence that these places are where the bulk of what you buy and use is actually made. The five of them comprise around 42% of global manufacturing. And these nations know that to maintain their edge in this space and many others, and to keep their manufacturing base, they need to have cheap and reliable electricity. We know that too. Well, those of us who bother to think actually know it. However, instead of accepting the truth about what is in our interests, our government, our corporates, and too many of our citizens are ditching logic and practicality for greenwashing. And in doing so, they're sowing the seeds of their own misfortune. And despite the con they're perpetrating against themselves, and the rest of us, I should say, the inconvenient truth is that coal demand is expected to grow by 1.8% this year, making one of the woke world's least like commodities one of this year's best performing assets. It all goes to show that, try as they might, mouthing green dreams is clearly not the same as living them.